Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque Painting Live on Thursday, September 2nd at 7 p.m. Central Time. And I have in the screen our August Bisque Box Gourd and Dragonfly that we did a new background technique which was squishing um, saran wrap on our base coated rust with our hot orange and our um, lemon peel I believe it was. And then we silk screened our Welcome Autumn and our Dragonflies. And then we base coated our Dragonfly and then dry brushed it. And then it was spray sealed with a matte sealer and then we put our um, rope through our hole in our gourd and glued that in there last week. Um, so that was our August box and we finished early. So we have a little extra project that I'll show you in a minute, but we did have um, a few questions um, with the silk screen and a few comments in the Brenda's this box group. Um, so if you are having trouble with your silk screen, you can always take a picture um, and send it in Messenger. Anytime you have any questions with any of your projects with our BIS box, please um, feel free to do that and I can usually walk you through it. Um, so we are going to go through the little silk screen, screen process again tonight and I will just add an extra welcome on the back of um, this gourd just to show you guys again how to do it. It is a new um, technique that we've used and if you haven't used it before, there is kind of a little bit of a learning curve to it, but it's actually very easy once you get the thickness of your paint down and you can practice on a piece of paper first. Um, Cordy, would we have a piece of typing paper or cardstock? I can um, just show them that they don't have to do it on the gourd first. Yeah, um, that'll work. Um, so if you have a brown paper bag or I'm actually going to just use a piece of um, computer paper. It's in your copier or your printer. So you can do that too. So um, because it is a new technique, go, you know, go ahead and try practice with it first. You have more than enough silk screen in your little um, container to practice with. Um, so I'll just use our black brown. Um, that was the color we used for our Welcome Autumn. So it's OS473. We're going to shake that up pretty good. Um, if you haven't watched last week's video, you can watch last week's video. You can watch tonight's video. Um, you can go to Drew's Mud Zone, and she also has a silk screen where she's using it. Um, so you can watch on there, too. Actually, I wanted to use a lighter color. I was hoping that would show up better, but maybe on the white um, it will. So I guess we'll try that if it don't. Um, so I have a nice little pile of my black-brown. And then we have our silk screen medium in our little container that was part of your project. We also have the larger containers that you can, uh, or is it on our webpage, Courtney? Yeah. Uh, purchase from Brenda's Brushstrokesandbiss.com. It's called Silk Screen Medium by Mako. And then we have, um, I'm just going to use the Welcome Silk Screen, but we use the Welcome Autumn on our gourd. And then I did wash it up last week after we were done. So it's just a piece of heat transfer vinyl. And then we cut out our um, design. And then that is weeded out. The welcome words are weeded out. Um, it's Sizer Easy Weed Heat Transfer Vinyl. And then, maybe hard to see, but there is silk then ironed onto or hot pressed onto the vinyl and it's 80 mesh silk so 80 and then the word M-E-S-H and then silk S-A-S-I-L-K so it's actually a fabric and it's um, that's 80 is how many squares are per inch and it comes in different um, types like you can get 120 but 80 is what Drew used so that's what I also used so that is a piece of fabric that is then ironed on or heat pressed onto your um, heat transfer vinyl and then you have a silk screen. And we're going to kind of squeegee the paint through this and that's what's going to print on our paper or on our gourd. And your paint does have to be thick um, when you do that. And um, thicker than creamy peanut butter, it's more like cold peanut butter. Um, if you've ever bought in um, like car wax, paste car wax, it's going to be thick like that. 
Um, if you got our rub-on metallic box, it'll be thick like those rub-on metallics. It's not going to be like the thin liquidy paint at all. Um, so I'm going to take my paint and I'm using a palette knife so that I can um, mush this and blend it really good, kind of pulverize it really good. So I'm going to take my palette knife and go in there and get a pile. Um, it's maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. And I'm going to sprinkle that on my pile of paint. I'm not going to just dump it in one big pile because it's going to thicken right away. So now we have that on our, so you can see it's already kind of thick there where it went. So that's why you don't want it to have one, just one big pile. And now I'm going to pulverize that, kind of cream it together. And you can see how thick it's getting already. So we just want to keep picking it up, mushing it back down, pick it up. Mush it back down until you have a nice creamy paste like consistency. So you can see that it's not like paint anymore, it's more like a thick paste. And if you need a little more, you can add a little more. But I want to keep pulverizing that down so it's nice and smooth and get all those little grains really worked in. And I'm actually putting my finger on the end of my palette knife to so kind of get a little more pressure on it. If you don't have a palette knife you could use like a um, table knife. So now you can see that that looks um, quite thick. I'm going to try to hold it up here so you can see it even better. Um, so it looks to me like cold peanut butter. So hopefully you can see that. It looks a lot like the rub-on metallics. It's very very thick. If it's too thin it's going to bleed underneath your silk screen and you're going to have wide, wide letters. Um, so you can see it's very thick. Very thick and creamy. Kind of like paste. Like a paste wax. Okay. So let's see, we got some comments. So let's see, let's take a look. So Mary Ann says hers was a little thick, but it was okay. Um, so if your paint is th too thick, you can add a drop of your paint to your pile and, and mix it again. Um, Leslie says she messed up one side, made sure it thickened up more, and the other side turned out great. Yep, that's good. Um, so the other thing you can do is like we're going to do, we're just going to practice on a piece of paper here um, with the word welcome. Um, let's see, do we have any other comments from anybody on it? Um, my first paint was too thick too, Linda. Um, okay, because usually it's people have it too thin more than too thick. Um, but if it gets too too thick on you, you can just add a drop of paint, your paint to it, and that will thin it back out. So now I have my welcome on on my piece. I'm going to hold it down in the middle with my um, non-painting hand. I'm going to go into my paint and just grab some on my finger. And that's actually kind of a lot, so I'm going to wipe a little bit off. And now I'm going to kind of rub from the center out kind of rub it down into my little, kind of in a circular motion almost. Um, so you can see it's very, very creamy, very thick. And then your silk screens are reusable. You can just take them to the kitchen sink or your utility sink, sink and use the sprayer, um, a little warm dish, dish soap and water and you can actually wash them right out so you can keep using them. You would just want to have it dry. I'm going to pull it down. Um, you can also put the blue painter's tape around your silk screen like we did last week to help keep it from fraying, the edges fraying so that it lasts longer for you. Um, so they are kind of reusable. So I'm just getting a little bit of paint and I'm going to keep working my way on my welcome here. You can see it's kind of stuck down now even once you get the paint going through that silk screen. But I'm just smearing it or rubbing it into those that cutout area where the, the silk is. And I just keep going and getting more paint as it runs out. And you don't want a, lo a lot, a big layer on top. You don't want a pile of it because when you peel your silk screen up, um, that would it would peel your paint back off. So you're you're kind of rubbing it right through that silk, 
and onto your piece. Um, I'm just doing it on the paper just to show you that you can practice it um, on something first till you get your paint the right consistency or um, just, just practice. You're just rubbing that through that fabric. Just grabbing a little bit of paint at a time, rubbing it down and rubbing it right through. And, and the silk, the paint does get thicker as it sits there, so you may need to add a little bit of um, just a tiny drop of paint to it to moisten it back up if you're taking a long time to do a big project maybe. Huh? The table, because I'm rubbing. Um, I'll try not to do it. So now we have that on there. So I would just take my corner now and lift it real gently. And you do want to make sure you, um, when you're on your piece, you don't get, get it outside of it. And then we just lift it real carefully. And I had lifted up my corner when I was doing it, so that did smear on there. But you can see it, it comes through really well. Um, if you have a little area like right there that you don't like, you can take a brush, that it kind of missed it, you can take a brush and just brush some of your black brown in there. Um, here where my silk screen kind of flipped up when I was rubbing it, that got the little smear there. Um, I would just touch that up with the rust first and then come back and dab my yellow and my orange. Um, so you can see that you can um, practice it on paper, so don't be afraid not to practice it first. Um, so we'll put that aside and we'll go to our piece. And I'm just going to put welcome um, on the back of this one. So actually this is kind of kind of dirty now. Um, so my screen is actually kind of clogged up. Um, I'll take my water just to show you right on the screen. You can just kind of rub it between your two fingers to kind of clean that out. Um, I'll probably need a rag. Um, so I'm just rubbing the water between my two fingers to clean clean the silk, silk out so it's kind of clogged up. So if you're doing five or six welcome, you know, you, you're going to want to clean it out probably after every second one for sure. But you can see how nice it, it cleans right it cleans right up. And then we're going to pat it dry. Because we do want it dry when we go to our piece. So we'll just get it dry here. Okay, so just like that, our screen is clean. So you can see there's nothing to that. I just rubbed it between my fingers. Um, now my paint's been sitting here, so it's just probably a tad dry. I'm just going to add a drop of on my black brown to it and mix it up again because it's it's very very gummy and thick right now so we're just going to add just a little bit more paint to it just to soften it up a little bit just because as it sits it it does get harder okay so we got it mushy again so now I'm just going to pick Pick an open spot on the back side here and line my welcome up in between my dragonflies here. And then I'm going to anchor it down in the middle with my non-painting hand. Go to my um, black brown and then just start from the center and work my way out. So hopefully you guys can see that good. So I, I don't tape this down because it's a round surface. If it was a flat surface, you probably could tape it down, but I want to work my um, ripples out as I move from the center out, and I can do that by not taping it down. I'm just rubbing it into the the cutout spaces in the vinyl where the silk fabric is because it's like printing it. It's kind of like the silk screen um, t-shirts you may have heard, did when you were in school. An art class, I don't know if they still do that kind of stuff. 
or not. So now we're going to come back to the other side and then just work our way out. So don't you know? Don't get frustrated if you tried it the first time and it didn't it didn't work because it, it is a new technique. Um, just just practice it on on a piece of you got an old brown gro grocery sack bag or if you have um, like the copy paper or you have an old envelope any kind of paper you can try it on on and then just wash your silk screen out if it looks like it's getting clogged up if you need to. Now we got to work our little scroll here because we have the round surface and it wants to ripple, so we'll just flatten it as you as you work your way out and just keep rubbing our paint down into our little silk screen fabric there. Okay, then I just look to make sure that all the silk screen is covered. I don't see rust coming through, and there's no big piles of it on top. So that it would peel off. So that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go by the corner, lift it off, and there we have a nice welcome. So again, that can just go in the water and be washed. Um, so hopefully you guys can give it a try and... Don't be afraid of it. Just practice on a piece of paper or a brown paper bag. Um, you should have plenty of extra silk screen, screen medium to try a few times. Um, you can see I've done the, we did our class piece and now I did our extra piece and I lost the lid. But there's, there's a lot in there yet that goes a long ways. You don't use very much. So I probably need some, oh, damp ray according to washing my fingers off. Um, so then you could just seal your gourd with your mat or satin sealer, whatever you like. Um, so that's all there is to, to it. I know it, you know it, it can be challenging because it is something new, but just just practice a couple times on something. And um, even if you have a piece of bisque that's a scrap piece of bisque or or the paper, it, it'll it'll print onto it. Um, make sure you clean off your palette knife good. All right, so we went through that again, but if you guys still have trouble, I'll probably need fresh water too, I guess. I mean, that can sit in there until we're done. Thank you. Okay, so then that was our box for August, and we already finished that. Do we want to show them the girl and the boy? Or? Um, so then we are working on invoicing everyone. Our September box, everyone is invoiced, I think, except one person, Courtney said. Um, so your September box is the ghost girl and the little pumpkin boy. And we will be shipping those by the end of the week and early next week. So you'll get the bisque for each of these. You'll get um, her little string for her bow, um, the purple glitter. It's a Halloween box, so there's probably something to do with trick-or-treating in there. If you've gotten the box before, you know what that's about. So hopefully you guys like these. We also have the other extra pieces for this set. Um, Courtney, add the link. You could go and um, add those. And then if you pick up, um, and you can do it yet, and she can still. Um, uh, Monday's probably the last cutoff date to add to your boxes. But you can go up to that link that she just shared and add extra pieces if you want to. Um, we're kind of filled up on cats, um, cats and crows. Um, I think we have room for a few more witches yet. Um, the kissing couple, I think there's a couple of those left. The little boy rolling the pumpkin, we're probably going to be full on him. I think I had her take that off last night. And then there's a little girl rolling the pumpkin. Um, the corn shock is full. And then there's the scarecrow. Um, but we can order those pieces for next month, too. So we do have the extra pieces to go with the box, too. We don't have the devil dancing, but we'll get that the next time we order slip. But that's your September box that we're working on. Um, so then as an extra for our August box, since we are done painting um, our gourd, I did finish up a gourd today as a scarecrow. So some of you did get extra 
gourds and if you'd want, you'd want extra gourds for next month um, we would be able to I'll keep pouring the gourds so we'll go through tonight how I uh, made this guy and there's not, nothing much to him actually so he's got some burlap on him he's got some stuff from the Dollar Tree the raffia some patches um, button from the button bucket uh, but tonight we are going to paint him up so you guys can see how to transform your gourd into something else so that it doesn't have to be a gourd. So hopefully you guys like that. So that is our little um, scarecrow guy. And I didn't glue his hat on because I wanted to show you guys um, how, how he looks all the way around when we get to doing it. So we'll set him aside. And that's what we're going to work on tonight. I did... Well, write up the instructions so I'll get those to Courtney and she'll be able to put them on probably the free resource tab on huh, Courtney is that good or not um, so here is just another gourd just like our welcome gourd I got one coat of light brown on it and that's OS467 um, so I'm just gonna throw another coat on quick so I can see through it a little bit so again it's OS467 light brown if you have a flat brush, that works great. Otherwise, I just use like a um, your size 8 um, round brush that I think you got in your box already as your extra. So I'm just going to grab my light brown and throw another coat on here where I can see through it. Especially on the face side, um, just to save time here tonight. But I did just base coat the whole gourd with light brown. Um, you could use a darker brown if you wanted or a lighter um, tone skin tone color is totally up to you I just used light brown um, we do have the chubby gourd and the skinny gourd as well I don't know if Cordy has those on the website or not the chubby gourd and the skinny gourd um, so she'll get those added for next month if you want to add those to your box for next month because you can always come back and look at the video on Facebook or on YouTube because she does post those onto YouTube as well. Yeah. You yep, we hit 519 subscribers I see today. You're one away from 4,800. Oh, so Cardi says we're one away from 4,000 followers on our Facebook page? Yep. Um, so, okay, someone someone follow us that's not following us, and then we'll hit 4,000. Amanda. We should be able to do that tonight. Only invoice, but it's not Everybody else. Okay, so Courtney says, Amanda, G, you're the only one that doesn't have an invoice yet. I think she's waiting to hear back from you. And then tonight we will also do the drawing for our Veterans Pay It Forward um, post that Courtney posted earlier from last week when someone bought us um, dinner at the drive-thru. So I'm only going to paint his half of him just to save time, but I would um, go ahead and paint the whole thing. A second coat if you're you're doing yours but it's just light brown nothing nothing hard let's see I need some paper tool so then when I looked at my piece I kind of divided him up into thirds and we got to let this dry just a little bit um, so if you want you can take a pencil and kind of draw where we got to let it dry though where your eyes and your nose and your mouth is going to be and then for the eyes, I just grabbed out of Courtney's cupboard her spice jar spoke for smoked paprika um, just to trace a circle um, for our eyes. So you can put triangles or whatever whatever else you want. Um, but it, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. So something like, like an aspirin, Tylenol bottle cap, whatever size you want your eyes to be. So we just got to let this dry for a little bit here. I should have a heat gun here maybe, huh? So let's see. So it looks like we got a couple messages going on that Courtney's taking care of you guys while that's um, drying. So Julie Bush asked where do you get your gourds? We carry them, Julie. Uh, let me see. We'll have them at the store. We'll have a few on the shelf next week when we open up. Um, we also have the skinny one and the chubby one. Looks like Courtney's taking care of Paula and Amanda. So, okay. 
All right, so I'm just going to take my cap off. And so I kind of want my eyes, I want my hat to be like the top third, so I'm going to kind of put my eyeballs here. So that there's no right or wrong. This is just a little quick, quick and easy project. Kind of give myself some circles. Um, kind of get the other one lined up with that one. Yep, forgot to bring the skinny gourd. I left about um, a generous half inch. Whoop, he's spinning on me. Generous half inch between his eyes. So there we have eyes, and all I did was use the cover off of the, the spice container from Courtney's cupboard. And wipe that off for her. Okay, so from there we have a triangular nose. So for the nose, I didn't make it a straight triangle. To make our, um, give it a round look, I went, I gave like a con concave um, arc to my triangle. So I'm just going to start like at the, if you divide the eyes into half and then into a fourth, so right about at the fourth and then in the center there. And then I want to come down like two inches or so. But I'm just going to arc this out. That'll help give our piece a round, round look to it instead of going straight. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Huh? The camera's focusing as we know because everything's brown. Oh, because everything's brown. Um, and then I'll do the same thing on my bottom. I'm going to do the um, kind of that nice arc. And I'm just using a pencil. Courtney's going to do something. I don't know what. <laughs> Maybe just lay him down. Motion sickness? Oh, it is, yeah. Okay, let's see if it catches up and does stops focusing so much. Too much brown, Courtney says. Okay, so hopefully that helps. So it's on there really light, you guys. Um. <laughs> Yeah, it's really focusing. Do we got to put another piece over here? See if we can get it to stop focusing so much. Oh, hopefully I don't get them full of paint. That did it. That did it? Okay, so we got that thing slowed down. So then, then your your mouth can be any any happy or whatever you want. So we're just going to draw kind of a little happy smile here from the middle of each eye. This is just a guide. And we'll probably come just a little further up on each side. And then we can have our little cheekies there. So Cordy wants to put a white piece of paper underneath me. It's like focusing too much, you guys, so. You have another one maybe? We got because the background is brown, brown, and then our piece is brown. It's just the camera's focusing too much; you can't tell the difference. Um, so let's hopefully that helped. Okay, so now we'll have to keep it in the screen. Um, so that's that's all there is to it for his face that I did. So now you can go look on Pinterest. You could go on your on the computer and type in scarecrow faces, and um, well, paper towel. Yep, that would work too. You can just get get your ideas from there. What you want the eyes to look like, or you know, like you could have triangular eyes, whatever, whatever you want to have. So it's just really just was a simple, quick little project. So now I'm going to need um, some black. Pretty going to need black, white, rust, medium blue, um, the two oranges, um, gold, and then lemon peel. So I'm just going to take some black first off. And that's our OS476. And then I'm just going to take a round brush. Um, I have a size 5. I think that was in your box, one of your boxes as your extra. I'm going to wet that. So condition my brush. You always want to do that. And then I just pat it out on the paper. And I'm going to go into my black. Kind of load that up. 
And I'm just going to paint my eyes black. So we'll just fill this, this in with black. And I'm just following my pencil line and you can go in a little bit outside of it if you want. It's just kind of a guide to kind of have round eyes and not lopsided ones. So we're just going to paint our black eyes in here quick. So if you look on, um, I mean, Pinterest is a good place to look. You can just type in gourds and all, all kinds of ideas come up of what you can do with with gourds from the painting them to look like scarecrows or um, trying to think what else. You can paint like birds and flowers and vines on them. I was going to try to do one as a gnome, but I kind of didn't have time. So we'll paint in the black on the one eye so you can see whatever size eyes you want. You just use use something that's around the house. You don't have to go and buy a special $10 template. Um, you can if you'd like to, but you can also make do. And so I'm just tracing around my pencil line here with my paint. Um, so this is actually a good eye project too because the eyes are nice and big. You guys should be able to see the eyes pretty well on the live feed here. Did you show them the finished one? Yep, we showed them the finished one. Did they miss it? Yeah, I did. Cordy says she missed it. Oh, well, you didn't think it was possible to make the scarecrow though, so what's well, your... I did not think he was going to look like that. Look anything like what no. it looks like? Nope. Not at all. So Cordy didn't think we could make a scarecrow out of the guard, you guys, but... Huh? Jan was doubting you with the hat today. Jan was doubting me with the hat? Yeah, well, the hat turned out, though, didn't it? Okay, so I have to come back and do the other eye because my light brown was a little bit um, wet yet, kind of rushing the thing here. So there's many ways of doing eyes. It's, I don't always paint them um, completely black like this. A lot of times I just do the bottom half or bottom two-thirds. Oh, a turkey. Yep, there's a ton of things, you guys, you can do with the gourds. You can also glaze them um, and fire them if you have access to a kiln. Um, the cobblestone would probably be really um, cool on them. Okay, so we're going to let those eyes dry. So I guess I can show you one more time what the finished one looks like in case you missed it at the beginning. But here's our finished guy. Um, I don't have the hat glued on, just so I can show you, show you guys. We'll take it apart at that point. Um, but this is your box gourd that we um, shipped you, everyone that had the box. So just showing you another option um, since we paint, are done with our gourd already. Um, so now I'm going to go to Rust, OS454 Rust. And there's not a lot, whole lot of shading on here. I just did a little bit of shading on his nose, um, basically. So I'm going to use my round brush again and just paint in his nose with our Rust. And I'm just following my pencil lines. Again, you can see there's kind of an arc um, to each side. Instead of going straight, that helps give that round, round look to his face. So we're just going to make sure we keep our round arc in there. I, mean, I don't know if you could go even to the hobby store maybe and buy a Scarecrow's face stencil. I'm not sure. I wouldn't doubt it, though. Or you could, um, if you have like the Cricut or a die cut machine, you could probably cut out a stencil for your um, scarecrow and freehand it. Whatever, whatever works. It's uh, don't make it hard. Just keep it easy. And then we have a nice arc on our bottom part of his nose too, so we we can keep that round. It help, just helps give that round look look to his face instead of a flat look. Brush that out. I mean, this would probably even be a good kids project. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, I'll need the glue gun, Courtney, though, when we get to the end. So I don't know if you have a cord to plug it into. I have the glue gun. I brought it with me. Yes, <laughs> 
Just going to get this side a little bit rounder to match the other side. And then just fill it in. Wash our brush out. So you can just see he's like just moving right along here. So now I need a liner brush to do his little face. We'll dip that in there and condition it. And I just have my 4595 liner that we carry. I'm going to draw my brush through my um, black paint, kind of turn it quarter turn so I can load up my liner. Um, and whatever, whatever kind of a smile you want him to have, just take your liner and give him a smile. Do I know the mold numbers? No. Just make all. And then we'll give him a little chubby cheeks by just giving that little black line right there. Um, the base coat is light brown. So I, I did write type right up the instructions as I um, painted it today so I can get that to Courtney tomorrow. Um, she can put it on our Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque, um, the free resources tab. Huh? The number. The number of the light brown. Um, OS467. Okay, so just like that, he's got a face. Um, I did, do have a pencil mark there, so I'm going to have to come back and touch that up. We'll just touch that up with our light brown. You could probably even use a like medium brown if you wanted more of a um, say of a more of a burlap brown look to him. So I'm just going to touch up my eye here on the side because I can. It's a little sketchy, a little jagged, I should say. Oh, it's really jagged. Okay, we'll let that dry. Wash out our brush. So now I have black on my brown, but we'll let that sit for a bit. Okay, so while this part is drying, we're going to move on to his hair. Um, for the hair, I used um, gold, which is OS436 gold. And we'll give that a shake. So gold OS436, Courtney. And I put a pretty good sized pile of that on one side of my foil. And then lemon peel OS434. And I put that on the other side. Kind of gave some space in between them. Four thousand followers. Well, thank you guys. Whoever followed us and made us to four thousand. I Marie Sween. Marie Sween. Oh, Marie, you hadn't followed us before. Well, what the heck? So I gotta wipe my ball stylus out because my paint was plugged. Um, so now at the classroom, I had a flat um, nylon brush, but I don't have a flat nylon brush here. So I'm just gonna use my size eight um, nylon brush. So we're going to make his hair now. So I'll take his hat off and show him, kind of show underneath here what this looks like. Um, so I just started from the, the bottom, did a layer all the way around, and then just kept coming and building it up. Um, so I did have a flat brush before. We'll use the nylon brush um, today. Now I got gold rust on him. Got rust somewhere on my fingers. Right there, it's touched in his nose. Okay, so I started with his. You kind of want to figure out where your hairline is going to come. 
So I dip one side of my brush in my gold and then the other side in the lemon peel, um, which is a little bit harder to do with the round brush than the flat brush. I just touch it and draw, draw it away, pull it away. Um, so you can have your hairs going different ways. So I keep tipping the same side of my brush into the gold and the same side into the um, lemon peel. And then you just, you can turn your hairs whichever way you want them to go. And we'll basically kind of come around as the whole face here. Um, if you have a flat brush, that probably would work a little better. But you can change directions on your your little hair straw here. Um, no, I don't know. I need to be a little stiffer. So I just keep dipping into my lemon peel and my gold. So I'm going to kind of look look at him, and I kind of want it to come around here. So we'll you kind of got to keep looking at him from head on too. And then kind of with each 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 one, I'm pretty much reloading, just dipping into each color. I'm um, doing about a two inch stroke. Um, this is just to give it color where they where the um, raffia went. So dip into your gold and into your lemon peel. And I'm just coming right down to like where the hair the hair would be. We got us a chunk. Okay, so now I'm gonna. So I kind of just came right around the, where the hair would be, the straw. So now I'm gonna come back to my other side and try to match that one up, kind of with the other side. Um, so I would probably pull it towards me, but I, well, I guess I can do it so you guys can see it. I just keep dipping in my gold and my yellow. And it don't have to be perfect because like here I missed it, but we're going to come back and put another layer over that. So it don't have to be like perfectly solid. Um, so I do like to turn him so I can get this side kind of, kind of the same as the other side. I don't want like a whole lot of space on this side and not much space of brown on the other side. So I am going to kind of turn him here. And just dip into the gold and into the lemon peel. That kind of gives you a kind of your own automatic shading, and I, you can take your hair in different different directions and kind of overlap it like that too if you want. You can make some a little bit shorter or longer. So now I got to look back. So now I got this side back further, so I'm gonna have to come forwards a little bit. And it will come down to about right where my thumb is there. And, and you don't want them like perfectly straight. You want them to have a little bit of curl and um, so it looks like it's going in different directions. So I did, this side is up a little bit further. So we're just going to bring these down a little bit. Now we'll, we can join our back up now. Looks like I got my fingers in these. Just keep grabbing my two colors, and you can see you can you can make them look like the wind's blowing it, or it's just stuffed in there any old way. But it's it's kind of even going across. Okay, so now I would come back to my front, and I just put my fingers in it again. I gotta sit him down because my screen went out. Oh no, I really got rid of it. Okay, so now we have one layer, so we're just gonna keep doing layers. Just keep going from your gold to your yellow. So now you can, um, I probably leave like a half inch to three quarters of an inch, and now I just do another layer of of our brush strokes going, kind of going in different directions. and. 
Oh, I'm just giving him layers of straw looking hair. So we'll just keep going. Again, they're about an inch and a half to two inch strokes, and they're just going this way and that way, and it's not, nothing fancy. So you want him to look like he's got hair going whichever way you can, um, or you want it all to be going one way, you can make it all go one way, you can, you can see I'm just kind of overlapping them, what? Just way in that way, yep. Looks like he had a bad hair day, whatever whatever you want to do. Out in the field. Out in the field, yep. Um, so I'm just going to work my way back around. So you can see now I have um, probably more of the lemon peel in there, but that just gives that lots of, just gives your piece lots of color and kind of gives it its own shading just by using the two colors. So is any anyone going to actually make a scarecrow? Or are you guys just kind of following along and probably won't? Um, so Cordia says, is there another piece of this they could do this with? Um, probably a pumpkin. Huh? I haven't seen a scarecrow tree yet. Scarecrow tree, no. So now I'm actually back around to, to my front. So we'll just give us another little layer of straw here in the front. So you can see they just overlap each other just like the straw would be overlapping it. And and I just keep, I tip one side of the brush in the gold and one side in the Lemon peel. Um, I do kind of like the flat brush better, but I we didn't have one here, so this this will work too. And it's just you just kind of push down and and lift. And you want to be careful not to get your fingers in that because it's kind of heavier heavier paint. It's going to take a little bit to dry. And I'm trying to get like every, all the little brown areas, but it's, you don't have to get every one because um, we are going to put that raffia on there too. So just go from your gold to your yellow and you can, I mean, you could, if you wanted him to have brown hair or whatever, it's no right or wrong. It was just a quick, easy extra project for you guys. So now we kind of we're back around, but I, I don't want to start at the top because I want my things to keep overlapping each other. So I'm going to come back down to the bottom. Oh, the oh yep, the jolly tree. There's so you could probably do anything that the jolly tree type patterns you could do on these gourds too. Um, you could you could make them into a ghost. Um, the Grinch. I mean, you can do all that on on the gourds. We we actually ordered the Jolly Tree back in, well, I think it was April, but we haven't been able to get it yet. It broke on one pallet, and I don't know what the holdup is now at this point even. Um, so you can see I'm just going one one over the one layer over the top of the other just to keep having that layered kind of a shingled look. You have to start from the bottom and work your way up. Um, so just like that, he's got hair, and then it's just just built up little layers of um, paint. Yeah, Christmas ornament bulbs. Huh? Christmas ornament bulbs. Yep, you could do that on this. Okay, so we got his little hair done. So we're gonna sit this down and let that dry, and I'm gonna wash out my brush. Yep, you could do it on little Christmas bulbs, little pumpkins. Um, oh, huh? Easter egg, yep, you can do it on Easter eggs. Okay, um, so now I kind of got my fingers in paint on my thigh, so I'm going to touch that up where we have paint all over. Um, so that is heavier, so you do have to be careful not to get your fingers in it while we're working on it here. 
I'm just going to touch up where I got my fingers in my rust. His hairline seems off. Yeah, I think it is, but um, you can add. You can go back and add some if you want. Yeah, I think it needs to come over a little more. The girl that don't paint's noticing things. <laughs> How funny is that, you guys? He just looked like he had a bad haircut. He had a bad hair. Well, maybe he did have a bad haircut. Um, we'll just try to add some in there. You had a lopsided gunny bag. Um, he's going to get the raffia anyway, so. Is that looking better? It's probably okay. All right. Need a little, well, we can touch that up later. Okay, so we can go ahead to his eyeballs and we're gonna get some white. Um, OS 431 white. And we'll go back to our liner and draw it through my white and load it up. Um, so here's a good eye, eye practice because we got nice big eyeballs. Um, so I like to come from about nine o'clock to three o'clock. I don't worry about what the inside of the eyeball, how jagged that is. What I'm worried about is my space between my black my black line is what I want to be nice. So I start at 10 o'clock kind of in, in the eye and come out towards the, the eyeball edge. And that way I can um, see how thick my black line is. And then I can work my way right around it and kind of keep the same thickness. And I can brush that out where I started. Again, I'll start in my white and work my way to my edge so that I can see right where that white picks up, which is right there. And now I can keep that same thickness of my black line. And we'll come right around till like 2.30, 3 o'clock. And then I can go into my eye. And now we can fill this in a little bit because I want to make sure I have enough white where the white of the eye is going to be and then paint it out nice and smooth. But I'm not worried about how ugly that is in there. I'm just worried about my, my black line that that was nice and even. And because I had him crooked, I needed to go further. So we'll bring it up a little further here. Try not to get my paint in the, my fingers in the yellow paint. going to bring it up till two o'clock further okay so there we have it from about 10 o'clock to 2 two thirty or so so now it's more at two o'clock so the white is kind of a crescent shaped moon so now we'll do the same on the other side I'm going to start like at 10 30 start in the eye work out towards the edge. Now I can see that it's right about the same thickness of the other one and now we'll just come down, brush that out. Again I start in the white and merge over to my black line so I can see where the two join up which was right there. And then I can brush my white out again. I gotta be careful here not to get my fingers in the yellow. Start in my white, bring it out to the black. I'm resting that painting little finger right on my piece so I have a nice steady brush. So I need to come up a little bit further. I'm actually going to come down instead because my 
yellow, yellow. I don't want to get my fingers in my yellow, but normally I would have kept going. So I start in my black, merge over towards my black line, with my outline of my eyes so it matches up with the other one. And then I can fill my crescent in a little bit here. So there's every, everybody does eyes different. That's just kind of how I how I do mine. That's kind of how our our eye video is done the same way um, with the piggy bank. Um, but this guy's kind of got nice big eyes, so he's a good he's actually a good eye candidate. Um, so we'll come back and fill in our white over here just so we can't see through it because right now you can see the black through it. So did anybody say they were going to do the scarecrow or not? Yeah. yeah. Now we'll come and fill in the other one, get a bit of second layer. Just because we don't want to see our black through our white. So you could do the same technique on, um, say, pot lids. I did it with pot lids too, um, with snowmen and gingerbread men and... Like you go go to the Goodwill and collect pot lids. Okay, so we'll let that dry. And now we are going to go to our or hot orange, OS439 hot orange. And all I needed a little bit, so that was way more than I needed. And we're gonna get a nice little round dry brush. Um, probably about a size three and this is one of our boar bristle dry brushes natural hair brush for dry brushing and I'm just going to dip into my hot orange and then brush it out of my paper towel and I just want to highlight um, his little nose with some of our hot orange Let's see if I can sit him down here while our eyes are drying we're gonna work on the nose so we're just gonna dry brush over the rust with our hot orange just to give it a little more dimension. And I'm just staying inside my triangle, leaving about a quarter inch of the rust around the outside and then more of the hot orange in the center. Kind of doing that C stroke or comma stroke. And from the hot orange, we're going to go to orange peel, OS 438. And we'll put a little bit of orange peel in the center. Use my same dirty brush, dip into my hot, my orange peel, brush it out on my paper towel. And now kind of brush in the center, just to highlight that nose a little bit. A little more on the bottom, kind of keep that triangle shape that the nose has. But it just gives it a little more um, shape shape to your gourd, a little more interest. Leaning towards the bottom. So you can see now his nose kind of has a little more shape to it. The two-tone hair, yeah, I mean, you can use that. You could use like light brown and dark brown, or, you know, medium brown. It wouldn't have to be the yellow. I just use yellow because of the straw. And from there, we're going to grab some black brown. And I'll make 8 o'clock, make a little pile of that. I'm going to use my liner brush. 7.30 was Courtney's bedtime, you guys. Okay, so now we're going to... Um, I just outlined his little nose with the black brown and my liner. You can go on the brown or on the rust, whatever works for you. Probably plug the glue gun in. It's in that bucket I brought. 
Is this your original blue gun? Nope. No. Do you still have that one? Yep, that's at home. I wasn't bringing it to the... I didn't give that up. Dinosaur. Yep. So I'm just outlining, outlining his little um, nose here with the black brown. I didn't go with black. I didn't want it like really dark. We have a problem. Ain't got, Ain't got enough plugins. Well, that's a problem. I'm just using a line, our liner brush that we use all the time. Um, then I actually gave it a couple. I gave them an X at the top, and again, those have that same concave roundness to them, so they don't look just straight. Then I give one in each corner here. Um, those X's, when you give them that roundness instead of just a straight, it just makes everything look more uh, more dimension to it. Um, and then I just put one, two more in the center of just kind of divided that. And you wouldn't have to do this either if you didn't want it. It was just something to give him a little more character. Kind of look like he's got stitching. Okay, so wash that out. So there is his little nose all done. we got to add a little bit of white up in his eyes here. I can still see through it. Then I'll need the raffia out of that bucket that the glue gun was in and the scissors and the buttons. So we're just giving another layer of our white on our white here. And then I did do blue eyes, but you could do brown eyes or green eyes, whatever you wanted to do, it don't matter. Um, so while that's drying, we're going to give him some um, cheeks. I used azalea. Let's see, where is azalea? Well, I'll just use cotton candy. That'll work, too. Courtney's got azalea. All right. So azalea or cotton candy. Um, just a cheeky color. Um, if you have chalk, that works good, too. Um, we'll just take a round dry brush. This is a size um, 8. An eight, yep. I'm going to dip into my azalea and brush it out really, really good. And then where his little cheeks are here, I'm just going to kind of um, blush it a little bit with the azalea. Kind of going in a circle. And we'll go that to the other side. Do the same thing. You probably don't want to get it too pink. Back to the other side. Okay, so now he's got little pink cheeks. And we have some brown up here I must have got my fingers into, so we'll touch that up. Wash that out. And then we'll go to our medium blue. Yeah, where's medium blue? They have medium blue, OS457, medium blue. And we just need a drop of that for his eyes. And now we'll do a blue crescent, kind of like our um, white crescent. Um, so again, I start in my black and merge over to my white. And then I get that nice pie-shaped corner. And then I can paint that out. Again, I don't worry about the inside of the eye. I'm worried about the white, the white and the blue, or the white and the blue are uh, meeting. Um, again, I come now. I'm going to come to the other side, like at one o'clock. Start into the black, merge over to my white, um, and bring my blue wherever it is you want your white and blue to start. Brush it out. Um, so normally I would go right around, but because his um, we got wet hair yet. I kind of got to do it a little different. Start in my blue, 
merge over to my blue and white. And I can see right where they pick, meet each other. And then I can fill this in a little bit. So I have, you want it at least as wide as what your blue is going to be, a little bit wider. And again, it doesn't matter how it looks on the inside. It's just that um, where the white and the blue meet that you're more worried about. Um, so he's a little high on this side where the white starts. So I'm going to bring it down a little further. I don't like it up that high. I'm just going to cover up my white a little bit further. And bring it down. And it's still a little high. I just, I like it more at like 9 o'clock, so we're just going to try to bring it down here. Okay, that's better. So now we'll do the, oh, let's crook it there. Touch it up a little more just because it seems a little crooked. I'm just getting my blue line really straight where it is on the white. And I will go and match the other eye. So I want to have um, the outside of this eye where the outside of that one is and the inside where the inside is. So we'll start on the inside. So I start in my eye, merge over to my edge. And I can bring it down to right where th that one starts going out. And then paint that out. Now we want the other side to kind of line up too. Again, I start inside the eye, merge out to the black line. Try not to get my fingers in yellow paint here. So it doesn't matter if that's all jagged, we'll be covering that up with black. So what I want to look at is, are the insides kind of the same, and then the outsides kind of the same? I think this one's got to come down just a little bit more. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm going to wash out my brush. I need to go back to my black, but I need to let that dry. So we have his face, we have his cheeks. Um, we need some eyebrows, which are black brown. So I'll use my liner. We'll just give him some little eyebrows here without getting in our yellow. So I'm going to sit him down. We kind of want those to be in the same same area, but it's kind of hard to not get in the yellow paint, you guys. Oh, I got in the yellow paint on the pad. All right. We want these to kind of start at the same, so give the same arch kind of to it, the same length. And that's not the same. Looks like he's got to come in further. Okay, that ain't too bad. This one needs to be a little bit wider. pretty good we can wash that out our blue we can starting to dry so we'll get some more black and now we're going to make a wedge with our um, however much blue you want left in your eye 
Again, I start in, in my black, start merging out, come down to where I want the blue. It ain't dry enough. We gotta let that dry a little more. Okay, so while that's drying, I can show you um, what I used for his hair. Um, so this is just from the Dollar Tree, it's raffia. And I just, there was three in the package. So you can use any kind of raffia, you could use Spanish moss. So we'll undo this while we're letting that eyeballs dry. So this is kind of messy. Jason's going to think it was glitter. It's probably as bad as glitter. Um, so you can see you kind of can split it and find the center. Huh? Um, so it's just raffia from the Dollar Tree. So we'll set that aside. Um, then I had um, some fabric that one of the ladies brought in, brought in for us. The scissors were in there too, Courtney. Um, so I didn't have a long piece of fabric, so I just took two short ends. Just took two short ends and we're going to glue them together for his bow tie. But if you have a long piece of, um, I think this is wool, but you could use like flannel or, um, didn't really want to use ribbon. That didn't quite look right. Cut the end off here. And then this I took, if you, if you had a, a full piece you wouldn't have to do this, but I, I had to glue it together because I didn't have a long enough piece. So I just hot glued it. So we'll just get this ready while it's um, the eyes are drying. So then I just made a little bow tie. Um, to make a bow, you just kind of flip one, make one loop, make another loop, hold it in the center so I have a top and a bottom loop. Now I'm going to bring that underneath and I have to tie that through that center loop. It's kind of like you're tying a, a bow, bow tie. Um, if you have a longer piece of fabric, of course, it works a lot easier. And if you don't have a numb finger. So then I hold my two loops with this hand, and then I just pull my, my other little string with that hand. So now you can adjust your... So that tightens that bow up on there, so now you can move these from to the left or to the right. Uh, we'll let our joining piece in the back. So there we kind of have our little bow tie. It's probably three inches or so, three and a half inches. And then I just cut little um, these and the ends of this, of each one. Hopefully you can see that. I mean, it's, not, it's nothing fancy, it's just a scarecrow. Um, so there's our bow tie that we will glue on. And then I uh, made a couple patches for his hat. So again, I didn't have big pieces of fabric, so I just using scraps up. If you have a flannel shirt or something, just use that. You can cut your little patches however you want or however many if you just want one, two, or three. Um, then I pulled my little edges to get it to fray. Just pull some of the strings out. And that makes it fray. Um, that works easy with the flannel or the wool. So we'll get us some patches here. So we're just letting his eyes dry while we're um, doing this part of it. So we can do the black. You can fray this as much or as little as you want. I'm just pulling the strings out. And he's kind of crooked, so we'll kind of straighten him out. But they wouldn't have to be straight. They could be all crooked and crazy looking too. So do us one more. 
So you could probably buy like a straw hat from the Dollar Tree too, or Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whoever's got the straw hats, but I, I didn't have a straw hat, so I just made a, our little burlap hat. Um, so we'll put our little patches aside. Um, then I just had a piece of burlap, back him up so he can dry. Um, let's see. So this is his hat. It was just, it's just kind of a triangle. And then I folded it down on itself. Um, kind of cut it rounded. Move the paint. Huh? Looks dangerous. Looks dangerous. Well, it ain't as dangerous as the patches going into the water. Me either. All right, so I just have a, I don't know, it's probably like a 18 inch by 18 inch piece of burlap that I had upstairs. Um, and I'm just gonna cut this kind of at a round, round it on one edge. Not, nothing fancy, you guys. And then I kind of folded it over. So we kind of have a little hat here. Let's see. Um, so it's probably about eight inches wide. And I just kind of made it go into a little triangle. Let's see. Something out of nothing. Huh? Something out of nothing. So I'm going to actually fold this in so it or not. Kind of full it so you guys can see it. So we kind of cut this at a little bit more of an angle here, like a triangle. Kind of like making a witch's hat. Um, so now I can fold that one over. I can fold this one over. I can have my little V right there. And then we can kind of I'll make our point up here. And if it's still too long, I'll take a little bit more off. Okay, so now we can get our point up there on top. You're kind of just making like a cone head. overlapping it and getting it small enough on the bottom of here. We'll just wrap this around to the front or the back, whatever. It really doesn't matter. Um, just so I kind of got it in a cone shape up here. Just a little bit tighter. Kind of like a um, ice cream cone type of thing. A funnel, yep. So it's kind of like a funnel. And now I'm just going to take my hot glue, run it along this edge. my hand up in there and now I can just glue it down so we kind of got our hat now kind of your top of your witch's hat kind of looking like a funnel all right and then you can always come back and cut this so it looks a little bit more even okay, so we got our witch's hat there our scarecrow hat and we'll probably do the rest of it while it's on him. So we'll set that aside now. Bring him back and get his black into his eyes. So again, I'm just going to go back to my black. I'll do my eyes here. Kind of make that nice wedge in the corner of my blue. And have it go from narrow to wider. Come right down to the center there. Brush out my black. Um, again, come over to the other side. I start in the eye, move over to my edge, kind of at 3 o'clock there. So I have a nice narrow blue to a wider blue. 
And now we'll join these two up. And then I can fill that in. And I'm just using that 4595 liner that we have. I think it's a 5-0. Um, so I have a little divot right there. So I'm going to um, come back, start inside the eye, and merge out to my black, right where I can see my black is coming back down. I'll just kind of line that up a little bit better. And now we'll do the other side. Fill it in. And we'll go to the outside. Like you could use buttons for his eyes too. You wouldn't even have to paint his eyes if you didn't want to. My kind of an eye. Um, Cordy says it's her kind of an eye. The buttons. Um, the buttons. Yeah, if you have big buttons, you could use like buttons for your eyes. Just googly make eyes. it make it simple. Googly eyes. Yeah. Maybe even um, you could even cut out maybe like some plaid pla plaid flannel or something and use that round circles. Big X's. Or trying big X's. Well, that's kind of haunted. Away the Keep the birds away. I got a piece of hair in there from my burlap. You got hair all over. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get it done in a reasonable amount of time. Because when I look, my blue on the outside is kind of the same. The blue on the inside is kind of the same. Um, so that's kind of where we leave that. And I did put a little bit of baby blue inside of his eyes just to give him another, another more, um, just a little more look. So we have baby blue. Um, OS456 and I just used my liner and I just kind of ran that inside the inside of the uh, medium blue just kind of brushed it in there just to give them a little more highlighting and you wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to That one got a little too high. So we're just putting some baby blue in his eyes just to highlight him a little bit. Now I got a little too much on the inside there, so I'll have to come back and touch that up. the medium blue. There, that's a little better. So there he's got his little eyes done almost. We have to do our white yet. Um, so I'm going into the white which is OS431 and we'll give him a nice big comma in his eye. So I just touch down, do a nice curved comma and then lift. And we did that at 1 o'clock, so we'll do that at 1 o'clock on both sides. We don't want him cross-sided, so we, don't, we won't do it at 11 o'clock. We'll do them both at 1 o'clock. Um, I keep it in the colored part of the eye and don't get it in the um, white part. And then we can do our little X's in the corner. And you don't, I don't do straight X's either. I make sure they have a nice curve to them as well. Um, that just helps give the eye round shape also. And then we can put a dot at the top of each one of our commas. And then I like to put a dot at the top of each one of my little X's, um, kind of a smaller dot. Um, so there you have cute little eyes. So now we will take our glue gun, and I just started with my raffia, which is kind of messy. And I pulled Pulled some out. At least we don't have a cat. Yep. Um, 
And I'm going to glue on some bangs here first. So I just grab some of it, kind of get my ends kind of even. And then I'll cut it about four inches. And then kind of line up your top again and cut it about four inches. I'll take your glue gun and just kind of run it on his forehead, kind of up high. And then you can touch down with the with your hand to kind of get your um, raffia to glue down. And then you can you can come back and trim it after it's dried on. And then we'll just grab a few more and put a few more four inch pieces for the bangs. You kind of want your bangs long enough so that they can come out from underneath your hat. Glue is dry, so we got to put some more glue on. It's okay. If it's better that they're longer than too short. Mine were too short when I did my first one, um, so I had to make them longer so that they'd come out from underneath the hat. So just make sure that they're long enough. Um, so then I have the front. So he's got his little front bangs. Um, so now we need some longer stuff for the back. So probably about like 10 inch stuff and then I just fold it in half and cut it. You can cut another one off of there. I just kind of line them up in my fingers. You can cut them off. So you could use Spanish moss for this too if you wanted. So I just kind of do a line kind of around him just to get him um, some straw hair here. It's supposed to be cool glue, but it's pretty darn warm. That's a thing. Yeah, it's not hot. It's supposed to be cool. Yeah, that old one you got, it's not cool. Like huh? That old one you have, burn a finger off with it. Yeah, the old one you probably could burn a finger off with it. So I'm just getting my like my 10 inch pieces of raffia. It's probably old. Um, I'm going to just work my way right around his little head here. You can put as much or as little of this stuff on there as you want. There's no no right or wrong. Just keep working our way around. Huh? Well, well. I'm just kind of doing like bundles of 10 inch pieces here. So you just kind of bundle them up in my um, fingers, kind of lay them flat. Do a little bead of glue, kind of grab a hold of the top, and then lay it on that bead of glue, and then it almost, it kind of stick it in there, it dries almost instantly. And then if they're, they're too long, we'll cut them at the end. Let's see. Anyone got any? Well, you got the, all the names written down to draw the drawing. Yeah, I you forgot, didn't yeah. you? Well, she's falling asleep back there. I got to put her to work, you guys. Um, so we had posted last week. Anyone that posted a service member on our that post um, for our pay it forward, we were going to draw for a free September box for anyone that thought um, someone might like a this box. So Cordy's gonna write the names down quick and we'll do a drawing at the end to see who our winner is. We had some nice, really nice comments. Um, different people that have different family members or friends or know someone in the service, the husband or cousin. And so it was nice to see all those nice little comments. So you can put as much of this on there as you want. Um, it's from the Dollar Tree. I just, there's three come, come in the Package, I used about half of it. So we'll just get a little more, and then I, you can get, get a little more in here. So that just kind of makes this little straw hair. And then I'll just come back and get a little more, work our way back around. 
because he's kind of shy on this other side. Kind of do like four pieces at a time. Just kind of line them up. Put some glue down right just right over the top of what you already have there. Kind of hold it. Huh? Cordy says it's going to be loud for a minute. I think she's printing. Okay, so we have our hair on. So I'm just going to trim it back a little bit here and there because it does look a little crazy. I just kind of made them kind of the same length, but not exactly. Um, the little top, I'll just cut that off a little bit so his little um, hat goes on easy enough. All right, so now we have his hat. I kind of put, um, so I'll just show you. So he's just kind of got hair all over. Um, we'll let the bangs long yet till we get the hat on. So I kind of put the fold that's in my hat in the front. We're going to let the printer print. Oh, I need the screen out of there, too. Um, so I actually would have sealed him before we did our hair. Sorry, you guys. I would have sealed him with, like, a matte sealer. Um, then I'm going to put his hat on. I kind of put the little triangle on the off to this one, one side. And then I kind of make sure his bangs are hanging out yet and he's kind of a little bit too big yet so I'm going to cut a little more off um, kind of do it kind of round roundish uh, so put it back on him um, so that looks pretty good now again my little I kind of want to see the raw edges on the front so we'll put it there then I um, tipped his hat down his little where his little fold is here and then I'm going to glue that down, stick my finger up in there and hold that till it dries. Okay, so that's on there now. And then I took and made a, um, tied a string around the end of that with our, I just have another Dollar Tree rope. And I just tied a knot around the end of this. She might have to take it off to do that. You can see I'm just tying a knot in the top of his little hat there. And then I let that little cord kind of hang down. I'll put his hat back on. And then you can also pull pull these too and make it frayed out. You can make your burlap frayed out a little bit. So we'll put that back on there. Okay, then I had um, some buttons. So I just dug in the button jar quick before I left. Um, I thought this red one would be kind of cute. So we'll glue a red button over the top of our tie. So we'll just glue that on there. So there's nothing nothing fancy about it. It's just all quick and easy stuff. So we'll hold our buttons on. Again, that's just out of the um, button jar. Then I have a white one. We'll put a white one over the top. Whoop. Just to give it a little more um, color. So you can put buttons on top of buttons. You can cut your strings or let them strings. So now I kind of put his hat where I wanted it. Um, then I can come back and trim his little hair a little bit, but I didn't trim them all the same length. I don't want them um, real, real exact. And then you can kind of bring some forward if you need to come forward, or you can put more on. Turn that there. And then I had some, oh, I put some raffia on the end of his hat, too. So I just grabbed some of the, my little extra string ends that I had here. 
like four of them, kind of bunched them up. And glue that up underneath our buttons and our little peak. Just kind of made it look like the straws coming out of his hat too. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, not, nothing exact. It's just just a fun, fun little guy. Okay, so we got our cords coming down, our little ropes. Um, then we um, cut our patches. So I just took the hot glue and ran some hot glue on there so you can put your little patches wherever you want them. So little hot glue works works dandy. So you can see I just put them here and there. Um, you can just put one on, whatever you want to do. I put like four of them on. Put his little hat back on. And I think we can put one more maybe somewhere. So let's see. Maybe put one right there. And then if um, the other one had a um, ladybug button. Uh, so this one I just have a heart button, so we'll just add another heart button on top of one of our patches. And that is all there is to it. Oh, one more thing, we got to put his bow tie on. Um, so we tied our bow tie. And let's see, we're going to glue that on. So I just ran my glue across the back of my bow tie. Kind of got to lift him up. And then come down a little bit and then just kind of center that and hold it. And he's kind of frayed and looking like a scarecrow with the phrase on the um, bow tie. So there he's got his bow tie too. And then, I mean, it's really a quick hair, hair, hair job here, you guys, but you can go back and um, like fix yours up more if you want. Um, so there he is. We have ourselves a scarecrow. So you can kind of adjust your hat however you want it. If you want it off to the side or more to the back. Um, but there's our little, he's not cooperating here. Um, so you could actually glue this on, on him, which is probably what I'm going to do quick. I'm just going to put some glue up here on top. And then I can put my hat where I want it, kind of right there. So we have some of our straw coming out, and then we can come to the back and put some glue back there and kind of anchor it down back there too. So there we go, we got our scarecrow done. You can pull those fringes if you want, and if you wanted more hair up in there, you could tuck more hair up in there. Um, so that is about all there is to it. I would probably put more hair on him, but we're trying to do a quick, just a quick show and tell here tonight. So I would gl probably glue some more hair on him, but that's that's all there is to it. Um, so that's the one we did tonight. Here's here's the other guy um, that I made earlier. You can see he does have more hair on him, so I would probably put more hair on it. Um, and then here's our hat as well. So that is, and then I got stuff all over him from when we were, uh, let's see if we got some light brown. I'll have to touch that up later, but here is our, um, the sample one. So just, he just has more hair than the other one, so you can glue more hair on yours if you want. Um, so that is our show for tonight. It's just an extra project with the gourds. Um, we do have the chubby, skinny, and the large gourd. You could probably add them to your um, box for next month. Um, Courtney always said she'll have them on the website for the October boxes. Um, you could use other stuff if you have like a big um, Christmas ball or a globe. Anything round, roundish you can you can do that with, with this with. Um, so next week would be actually be another painting week as well. Oh, yeah. um, so I will whip up another gourd project that we will work on next week. I think it will be a um, haunted house scene. 
something we can get done in an hour and a half. Um, so you could take more time to, um, to do this guy. Like this was really a rush to get it done in an hour and a half, but he, he's still cute. And it's just burlap fabric that I had. You could get the, the a hat, straw hat, if you know the Dollar Tree or whoever hobby shop's got a um, straw hat. Throw some patches on it. Get some raffia for the hair or some Spanish moss. And you got some hair, draw, do your little face, use some scrap fabric for your bows and your patches and some buttons to doll it up. So I hope you guys enjoyed your um, extra gourd technique. Um, Cordy will get it posted on our Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque um, free resources tab um, sometime this weekend because we are working on um, shipping your boxes for September as well. Um, and you can still order September box. We have a few more left yet. Um, Cordy will put the link on there. And then Cordy has printed out all the comments from our Pay It Forward post. Um, from last Thursday, so we have those all in our um, in the bowl here. So I'm going to mix them up. Um, whoever the winner is, we will need you to email us. Well, we or message. I'm sorry, message us um, the winner's address so we can mail them a September box. Um, so let's see who we got here. We have um holly d lang oh my goodness holly one of our local ladies 20 years in the air force how cool so holly lang you are um jen nominated you because you were in the air your daughter jen um nominated you because you were in the air force for 20 years and um holly just happens to be one of our local ladies um so we had quite a few you can see we had quite a few comments um, so you're the lucky lady. Um, so thank you for your service. Thank everyone for their service as well. Um, it's not always an easy thing to do, especially um, the way things are today. Um, if anyone needs help, you can always reach out to the military, the VA offices. They can help you or get you in touch with someone that can help you. Um, so congratulations to Holly. And thank you, Jen, for nominating her. Um, we will have your box out at the classroom because I'm sure... Um, if you're not going to be out, Courtney says she can mail it to you. We'll, we should be able to get your address, or Jen, you can um, message us her address and we'll mail it to her. Um, so Jen, you won our September box, so thank you for your service. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Again, if you have trouble with your silk screening, you can always take a picture of it and message me and I um, should be able to walk you through it. Um, but this is our August box that we did finish early. Um, so we had our little extra scarecrow we did tonight, and then next week we will do a haunted house scene on our gourd. Um, so I hope everyone has a great week. Um, the classroom's open again starting next Tuesday and then Saturday with a few changes, so we'll be posting those later for your local pe our local Spiffied people. Well um, Spiffied it up a little. Courtney's doing some changes, moving stuff around. Um, room, a room is painted. Yeah. She's folded it up. She's got some gourds and pumpkins and stuff going on. Mums. Mums, so... I hope you guys enjoyed your night tonight. Give us some thumbs up or hearts or something, and we will check with you next week. And we will be doing our little haunted house. So I hope you enjoyed our free scarecrow tonight. So thank you, everyone. Good night.